What's up, hippo lovers? Next episode, Age of Empires 2 History. We are still in the year 2002 and are looking into the world cyber games, the Nations Cup. We will look at the third place finisher match and the finals. As you all know it, in the old years, we only had best of one, so only two games. Today, prize pool. Third, we get 2k for nothing from what I researched. Second, 3k and first the 6k so we will see those two sick games place three match will be between germany and netherlands and we have a nice youtube video that work for ice cream sent me so let's take a look it is a small german documentary that it's pretty loud in the background and we will take a look at that and look how players looked in the old days in 2002. In Players Village haben die Athleten der World Cyber Games 2002 ausreichend Gelegenheit vor den wichtigen Turnierspielen ausgiebig zu trainieren. So, it is in German, so they just said like, yeah, that, like, it's really unprofessional. But yeah, you see the quality is 2002 as well. In the players' village, people have a lot of time to train. Wir stehen vier Practice Rooms zur Verfügung und heute begleiten wir Age of Kings Spieler PG News des Team Germany durch eine Trainingspartie am frühen Morgen des 28. Oktober. So, um, they just said it is yeah a training session you see that's the rooms where they're all prepared obviously there were a lot of games pcs all the crts look so weird those are the team germany guys that we will see later on 2002 music as well so you see Resolution wasn't great. PG and News, alias Thomas Groß, im Trainingsspiel gegen seinen Teamkollegen PG Fire. So that is Muse, that is Fire, and yeah, they are training against each other. And you saw even the big trees there. It looked so weird. Some Asian guys in the background, and they are trying to warm up. You see all the mice, the mice as well. It looks so weird. <laughs> Oh god, and the keyboard. Ay, 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 ay. Hochkonzentrierter Blick. Ablenken darf man sich trotz des manch hektischen Treibens im Practice Room allerdings nicht. In den Turnierspielen nimmt der Druck allerdings noch mein Vielfaches zu. Oh god. So, yeah, they are super focused, but the pressure will be really on when we get into the serious games. Uh, did you meet them? Yeah, actually, we somewhat friends with Fire. He was a poker pro afterwards. Cold hands are a taboo. Oh, God. Oh, it's not that fast, honestly. But, well, those are the top guys <laughs> with that mouse. In 2002. Oh god, everyone is using their own mice and keyboard because they are so used to it. Uh, so sweet. PG Fire actually is playing again. And yeah, just came back some month ago. Ah, uh, lovely, lovely stuff. And yeah, that's how we see it all looked and how they played in the old days. Sick, sick stuff. And you see, well, it's not that fast and the camera isn't that great either. And yeah, zoom in even more. Jesus, what is this? Oh, God. Well, um... Seems like camera guys in 2002s weren't like <laughs> super well paid either. Ay, 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 ay. Yeah, <laughs> resolution was sick. Uh, 
Yeah, all the old monitors were pretty bad. And you had to think like, those are, that's kind of the best equipment you could wish for in the old days. Ah, so we will see a 2v2. Germany against Netherlands. The map was Arabia. Hidden or not hidden free pick. It's just free pick civilization and you can repeat civilizations as well. And the meter at that time was just clearly towards the Huns. I saw some other 3 tournaments uh, on, yeah, where we had even Hans Hans Mongols, we had Hans Chinese Mongols, so, and I even saw a game like 3 with 3 from Koreans where everyone picked Hans, so 6 times Hans. <laughs> And I'd say we will just jump into game number one here. It will be Germany against Netherlands on Arabia. Guys, I am pretty excited for that. The scroll speed is low as well as it should be. And we are jumping into it. Germany against Netherlands here. World Cyber Games third place finisher. This match was played in October 2002. So... Liri was half a year old. <laughs> well, PG Fire is actively playing on Bubli. Indeed, that's what's happening. And we are jumping into it, guys. So we have PG Fire playing in the gray. And he is picking the hunt. His teammate pretty far away will be Muse playing hunt as well. And on the other side, we have Dreams, who eliminated Muse of the 1v1 tournament earlier. Just has to be some days prior. And he's playing the Hans and Kraken Hans as well. So it's a whole fest. It's the same fire. No, it's not the Brazilian fire. And yeah, it's the German one. So four times Hans here. And you might wonder, what is this weird number here at the top? And if you didn't follow any of the AU2 histories, tournaments at that time were played with the timers. Whoever is ahead at one. 1100 years after they timed down that I would say like roughly 80 or 90 uh, minutes is winning this whole game I think it should be 90 yeah uh, Elklan yeah Elklan was kind of the best team in the world from 2002 to like 2006 ish I would say a lot of people were there uh, fire actually was in Elklan as well with the Nick Elklan water we had Elklan Bender there, an incredible German player. We had Doubt over there, Chris over there, Alive, Dreams. Close to every top player in the world was in Elklan at that time. Okay, so the typical six on food and sending someone wood. We have Muse playing with the same style and solid berries a bit of an open map here for dreams who didn't even build a lumber camp yet is now going for the poor and obviously we won't have a spec overlay so it will be tough to see what uh, if i can catch all the action are we gonna see some feudal age wow <laughs> it is 2002 so yeah drush fc was not an option we see that's very untypical that people are actually getting a boar without loom and all well, the boar in 2002 seems to be more friendly not going for the low hp one on the other side we see all other three players going for loom which was pretty standard before the first boar we have middle placement but yeah i mentioned it several times it is just so different guys you have to remember there was no chance of specking other top players a lot of people refuse to record their games. So actually getting better is so much tougher. I will try to translate sometimes and fire ask, what are you doing? Muse says scouts and fire, I believe. I, I just checked the first 10 minutes of every game if they run smoothly. Says I'm going to do the same. So we will see double scouts from the PG guys. Or from Team Germany, actually. The thing is, we can only see their chat. So if we want to see the chat of Dreams or Kraken, we needed the rec of them, actually. Otherwise, it's impossible to see their chat. It was pretty weird. 
And yeah, more impressive. We have to consider their gameplay because they kind of had to figure everything out on their own. That you have to send six on sheep, how you place lumber camps, how to micro, so forth and so on. Why hunts are the best. And yeah, I'm just, yeah, I, I was watching those games when I was a kid, like born 88. So I was 14 years and was really craving all the WCG games and phew, that was just such a treat and like mind-blowing game after mind-blowing game. How can you be so good? Only one minute idle time in Dark Age. And I was just like, Phew. those guys really, yeah, changing how the game has been played after WCG. Didn't find two of his sheep. Let me see. Well, we can't see uh, headphones problems. Throw them away. And that's pretty unfortunate for dreams. Who didn't find those? Remember, it's not the dreams. Uh, the Finnish guy. Who was in the early tyrant days. It is Rip Dreams. A guy from Netherlands. Who? Is he missing a boar? Oh, he had both boars. Okay, so missing two sheep. Did he get two stolen? No, that's only four. Oh, unfortunate start for him. <gasps> oh, he's missing those two as well. So missing four sheep. Unfortunate start for him. And, well, he will need to mill here. And then click up. Oh, but double deer. That's something really sweet. I think... With the generation nowadays that's impossible but yeah sometimes you had eight deer close by and he even goes for four deer at the same time uh, how big was the lag those days well if you played online it was pretty standard to have 600 to 1000 ping if you played in europe if you played against asian it was more like 3000 and i remember the old days when tsunami against myth we played and I had three opponents, all with 6k ping. So that was, that was something different. Remember, those games were LAN, and it's so weird for them to play on LAN. It was just absolutely unstandard. And yeah. Let's see what the strategy choices are. We have Pop26 from Dreams. We have Kraken. Um, going more like in the pop 27, pop 28 is direction. Oh, that looks like a lot of walls and a lot of farms. Is that maybe an FC? Well, we'll see about that. On the other side, we have fire playing pop 25 here. And we have also Muse running around. He plays pop 24. And you see how many farms people already built that early on in those games nowadays we are trying to avoid going for farms that early trying to squeeze in the horse color upgrade but not them in the old days going for a lot of stone maybe they have the team communication okay i play fast castle you try to defend there was there ping lag during LAN events i do not know that but i'm pretty sure there was very little let me check something else as well um Six positions, yes. Okay, I remember some weird old post. We'll see about that. Oh, and look at that. Muse actually collecting 50 gold. So he will go for bloodlines very early on. That's how you played it in the old days. Sending five villagers on gold and then going for the bloodline stables. Any of those games you guys still playing? Uh, Alkaline Dreams I saw like at least two years ago and PG Fire actually came back, I would say, two months ago, maybe three months ago. Muse and Kraken, I have no, uh, very sure that they aren't playing anymore. Okay, let's take a look. We have Muse now going for double stable and bloodlines. Okay, so that will be a lot of scouts for sure. Then we have Fire going for the same strategy. Oh, it took 50 gold here. And so that will be a lot of scouts from them. Kraken is playing this fast castle. So has too little food. A lot of wood. Trying to get a stable up as well. Defensive tower. Tries to wall himself. 
didn't use any of the deer. And that will be a pretty sloppy feudal age timing from him. Is even going for some sp oh, cast age timing. Will even go for some spearman. Uh, let's see how he played plays this out on the other side. We have Mr. Dreams with a lot of defensive towers. And he is playing this fast castle as well. Didn't even realize. So two completely different approaches. We see quadruple stable against double FC here. And now mass scouts are flying in. And that's a lot of farms already from Mr. Fire here. Let's see where he can find the engagement. Has less H had less HP. But seems like Bloodlines is doing the job. He had less percentage. Okay, but one spearman can maybe scare him away. Fire, is he trying to engage? That, that makes no sense. He pulled away the low HP one. And, well, that was pretty inefficient and lost a lot of HP here. Craig can completely walled and he is fine. Let's take a look. Is he up? No, only 600 food. Really lacking some on that regard. We have the better build-up from Dreams. Now the blacksmith, but was lacking some wood for sure. Another tower here at the front. Love that. And more scouts out. Walling your own main gold out of the map. Yeah, that's Mew style, right? Uh, interesting. Yeah, it is tricky. Elfish. Uh, I believe it was 24 and 25 villages. Okay, Stone Miner might have some problems. No. We'll get into the TC. A lot of scouts here. Kissing the TC. Aggression still continues. Dreams did build one. Spearman is now building his stable. Let's maybe go into the point of view of fire and see how they are communicating. Killing one Spearman here. And yeah, Muse just said, oh, well, you can read that on your own. Okay, now trying to wall up a bit. No transition onto gold. Getting wheelbarrow. Walling off the front here. And now they're trying to go for the wood line, or are they committing? That's a question here. Still a lot of scouts. And you see, oh, even in the old days, they built palisades under those wolves, seeing villagers or spearmen move over that and detect the aggression a bit earlier. Still a lot of scouts out from fire, trying to go for that tower, forcing another one. And Muse is moving in at the front. Let's take a look. No upgrades here. And Fire now asking, are you going to wall? Muse said yes. Those, those aren't full walls. And going for that gold. Oh, and now the raid is real here. Not a single villager died, I believe. Okay, now I heard the first one. Spearman is down as well. Scouts over here. And that's a big, big raid. Remember, like, quick walling wasn't really an option in the old days. People never learned that online because the ping was just way too high. Therefore, pulling back villagers was the only option. Or building a lot of spearmen. And he wasn't able to do any. Of the two options. Oh, okay, Spearman out now. And now they're continuing to go for the tower. Fire just running around. He is going for some more walls. Mining camp. Well, Doubt would be proud. That's why you see <laughs> Doubt is still by, uh, building those. More scouts here from Muse. And we have Kraken finally in Castle He is going for double stable. Let's take a look at his resources. What is he going for? 40 food. Villagers, some knights. And you see five knights queued up. No upgrades over here. Opened that area a bit. And now trying to come over and help his teammate. Mr. Dreams who is still in some troubles. He will, is Castle Age now as well though. Pop 30 is actually somewhat reasonable. Fast Castle though with 19.30. Muse trying to find some more kills at the berries. Oh, and that woodland is so exposed. Do they see that, though? F Muse has, well, some idea. Now he's over here. And that will be just so good for them. No real blacksmith upgrades. But it just needs to be pulled. And let's see. Is fire coming over? He will pick one villager of the stone first. And I, I, I dreams. Surely in some troubles. The knights now coming over. No upgrades on them except bloodlines. And 
and well trying to fight off with the villagers fire is around here trying to debate the knights away two are following the other scouts should maybe commit and get some of those kills at the moment muse and fire have to be up as well we see muse at 25 fire already at oh god he has a lot of food for someone who just clicked castle age still having 1k food left over Maybe he could have even gone for more scouts. Certainly want to see some of his blacksmith upgrades, but ay, yeah, yeah, killing more and more villagers here. Dreams in some troubles for sure. Maybe committing on those villagers is an option. Scout is trying to debate away. Dreams not falling for it again. Fire now micring that back. Villager survives with 4 HP, but she at the top is going down. Muse will snipe this one down. No, he cannot. And is fire moving in another time? No, not really. Even those two stuck. Now knights, uh, are they finding a hole? Oh, oh, this is open. This is actually open if he clicked in there. Which is obviously like super tough. Going for the walls first, maybe not really. But just moving in that direction could have been the option. Just remember guys, in the old days the trees were like three times the size as we saw in the video earlier. So... Oh god, he's already repairing. Oh, I lost 60 HP out of 1.5k. Repair! Uh, okay, now Fire is finally walling this off here as well. And Elklan? They are leading in score. Extra disease, zero. Dreams? How is his population? He is at pop 40. Has some defensive knights. Fire now up to Castle Age. So. This Muse and well, maybe those knights can get some kills done. Fire's trying to get a TC up. Tricky stuff here. We hear a gate. Oh, one at the front. Fire will get more palisades up here. Tricky move. Kraken needs to find another opening. Ruby, you know, it's not your dreams. Oh, really trying to get in here. Kraken, he is trying to find the openings. Fire, he's at pop 50. How many knights does he have? Plus one defense and still queuing up more knights. Has to TC his up, can even go for stone. Just invest some. Getting that up. Okay, and now the knights are in. Even an aggressive villager here of Kraken. Let's take a look what he can go for. Fire certainly will lose some villagers at his wood line. Score is somewhat close. Might even go into the favor of Team Netherlands here. Let's take a look into that. And nice luring away of those knights. What is happening at the other side? Dreams is trying to defend against Muse, who has bloodlines plus one and plus one against Dreams. With not a single upgrade on his knights. Fire needs to retreat here. He is at pop 54. Let's scroll through the populations. Muse at 58. Dreams at the same time 44. And Kraken leading the uh, fray with 69. Now building his first extra TC and tries to go for more aggression. Only bloodlines from him at the moment though. And those knights. Oh, not really finding the opening. Uh, sneaky barracks now with Spearman. Take a look if that villager can survive. We'll see more raids of Muse at the moment. Those towers without any upgrades. Ah, will just be tricky. I believe the Knights of Muse could even fight under those towers. Such a big upgrade advantage. More aggression here at the front, but Kraken really feels... Oh god, not really having the numbers here should hurt him. A lot of knights still defensive here for fire. And trying to deny that. Let's see if the villager will be found. Same time Muse continues with his aggression. Poor. Feels like Germany is in a nice advantage here. Let's take a look. If Muse can get the raid in here. Dream still with zero upgrades. Ah, can he not get on to more here? Feels like production is so much more important. Blacksmiths up. Blacksmiths kind of idle. So they just need to be put in the towers. And Muse is going for it. So a lot of knights here for Kraken. And maybe doubling over at the other side could be a good option. Now with the sneaky stable. 
Uh, asking for help here, Mr. Dreams. Fire holding over with more knights. And as you can see, the meter wasn't really CA at that time. It was purely knights. Such a mobile, strong unit and people felt like that's just the way to go. I, I, I one tower down, now spearman coming over, trying to help out. 2TC for dreams and that's the GG's even coming in. And we see fire, maybe, as I said, oh, Muse is riding the GG as well. Needed to switch over to the point of view of fire to see the chat, that's how it worked in the old days. Dreams, well, resigned a bit earlier than Kraken really wanted to apparently. He's trying to take another fight, felt like he still had a shot. Yo, is that an overchop? Was that open all the time? I have no idea, but well, Germany will take place number three here and... Yeah, we'll take the win. Kraken even continuing to play here. Kind of weird to me. Fire riding the GG afterwards. And yeah, that was just quadruple stable with double bloodlines. And against two guys playing fast castles with like 1830 and 1930 times. One player walling himself, having a lot of idle villagers or idle TC even. And the other guy trying to get some defensive towers up. Not enough spearmen to defend against the 12 bloodline scouts that there were. And... Bah. Germany won, nearly was so proud. Not really. Not really. And yeah. Fire and Muse taking the W here. The sneak wasn't really efficient. Oh, knights. Just too slow. To help out there against the scouts. Although, obviously, they're, they couldn't really chase it down as a team. And nice to base in here, clearing up that wood line. Kind of the nail in the coffin, if you ask me. Let's take a look at the stats and the up timings. So, KD. And better for Muse, obviously. They got so many villagers of dreams here. Kraken, actually, with going FC. 13 to 25, a lot of villagers died there at the end, possibly. And now let's take a look at the timing. So that was the perfect timing for POP25 is actually 11.20, so Fire was 10 seconds behind. Muse was 35 or 36 seconds behind. But yeah, you see, those castles coming into the gaps between reaching Feudal Age and Castle Age is just um, pretty different for sure. And... Yeah, why did I have caps lock on, guys? That's so weird. <laughs> okay, score is obviously 1-0. My bad. And 39 villagers only. Ah! What a, what a shame. And yeah, you see, PG just relayed their castle ages, but got so much more military out each, and just got the kills done there. Okay, then let me prepare. Lanchi, thanks for the 100 biddies again. Lanchi, you already told me that. And I asked you back and you didn't answer. Well, that didn't really help. Okay, so it will be... Taiwan against Hong Kong, oh, not Hing, Hong Kong. Those were the finals at that time. And let's add flags as well. For Taiwan, we have this one around. And for Hong Kong, That one right so then let's update score to zero zero back again and the title has to be wcg 2002 nations cup final best of one you also can edit it here a bit to the right hand side look behind the scenes guys and 
take a look at the state from the old days. So that was basically <laughs> yeah, the big WCG 2002 states. You can see the sponsors, Coca-Cola, Intel, Nvidia, Samsung, KT. Mm. We have a weird drum set on the stage. <laughs> Those are the kind of the hosts. And a picture of the players. So left hand side we will have KM Cam and Ken. There is an eye missing. Playing against Chun Yu, which is Yancy, I believe. And yeah, Coconut, who I only saw in this tournament. Never before, never after that. And it was played at Age of Empires 2, The Conquerors. Uh, those good looking nuts, 2002, right? Just too, too pretty. Uh, HD picks. Well, what can you do? Cameras were bad in 2002. How many people watched the games? Maybe a couple hundred on the stage and a couple thousand watched the records. Ah. Best of one as a final. Yeah, that's how it worked in the old days. Remember, the first episode we had, we had a best of one for $50,000 or like $30,000 difference first place second place right uh. favorite player Jancy I love him as well he is so good oh yeah yeah uh, doubt wasn't good enough at that time uh, when we move further in AU2 history uh, going into 2003 I think he will show up Next episodes will be the Arbalet Cups, where, let me see, I already prepared the records. Is Doubt around there? Uh, we will have Arch Coven, Chris, Halen and Grant playing. Oy, 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 oy. But that's coming up later. I think for now we can maybe just jump into this one. It will be Taiwan against Hong Kong here in the world cyber games 2002 nations cup finals you want to see lord doubt in 2002 i think he was too bad i might i might have a black forest game against Eklan chris i think i have that serious but we will, we will see we will see i have a lot of stuff collected and let's jump into the Finals now, you can see $3,000 on the line and a lot of prestige, obviously. So, let's find out what players are playing. We have IMKMKM playing the Hunts and his teammate I'm Ken is playing Hunts as well. Coconut, no surprise. And we don't see a lot of houses from Mr. Yancey here either. So quadruple hunts again, that was the standard at that time, no surprises there. And we'll see how they will play it out. It is probably not going to be double FC against double scouts again, but yeah, I'm curious. Normally the meta was more like skirms, spears. So Germany coming up with interesting ideas for sure, wanted to double a bit more as it seems and therefore adjusted their playstyle. They in their 1v1 played very heavily Spearman style, uh, uh, Scout, Sk no, Spearman, Skirm style and then adding Scouts before fletching was pretty standard. And you saw people didn't really realize how important Blacksmith upgrades were at that time as well. How should the Black Forest game during 24 hour stream? Well, then I will see it again. It wasn't one game, right? It was a best of five series, I believe. But we will see about that. Yeah. Hmm. 
Oh yeah, the good old Chris. Top two in the world for solid six years or something. The battles of him and Doubt will be so sick. One day we will cast the best of 21, Chris against Doubt as well. Price pool was $1,000 and it's not the typical price pool. It was both players putting on $500 of their own money. And that was just so sick. The first ever broadcasted series by the real Finnish Dreams and me at the old days for 360p. And incredible. Bad internet. But that was so sick. And people still couldn't really spec. We didn't have any spec overlays and had to watch by co-oping with one player. But yeah, we will all talk about that later on for sure. Now, some boards coming in. We see all players going for the early beautiful loom. Three on wood here, four on wood, four on wood. And well, that is something you will always see if the trees are so big. So, so tough to micro. Actually, Yancy doing a pretty good job here. Best, best, best of 21 ever. Probably, right? Question is also, does he even see his main gold spot? I uh, really should deinstall the small wood mod here. Oh, dropping off. Some, oh, okay. Going for the deer. Oh, guys. That's something that most of you probably don't know either. You know, if you carry gold and click the villager on food, wood or stone, you lose all the gold the villager has in his hands. The same thing was happening if you switched in between foods. So if you had 35 food from a boar and clicked on a sheep, he would lose all his food. And that's why he dropped the food from the berries and then only went for the deer. It was so, so weird. But yeah, that's how it was at the old days. Different food types indeed. Ay, ay, ay. I'm still playing like this. It took me a solid half year after it got fixed as well. Yeah. Okay, some more farmers now. Only having two on <laughs> wood here. Oh, well, a third one getting some stragglers as it seems. And let's take a look into the strategy choices. Well, it is a bit early to see really how they're advancing. No one will play pop 22. At least that's what I'm expecting. If you had food from the deer and go to boar, still a hunter to keep food. I think that was the only thing that worked, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hunt, hunt was hunt. But the rest got all switched around. See, oh, pop 22. And I said we probably won't see pop 22. And oh, a forward as well. So Jancy going aggressively. Let's take a look. What does he see? Oh, it didn't scout much yet. So he just felt like, okay, I have a good start. Let's go aggressively. But look at that. He only has five villagers on wood pretty soon. Okay, now sends a bit more. Scouted his opponent. What is his teammate going for? Pop 22 as well. So Chris starts. Oh, not the most efficient lumber camp here. Getting some damage done against the scout. Okay. And now goes for the second deer. And he goes for forward as well. So both going pop 22 forward here. At the same time, pop 24 forward from I am Ken. And I am Ken, Ken. Pop 25 staying at home. So we have triple forward in a 2v2. And take a look how green and blue will face each other. Ay, 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 this is getting really, really intense, guys. It will be tough for me to switch in between players. And <gasps> oh no, I'm Cam Cam is going for the forward as well. But he didn't scout. Don't tell me he is forwarding his other guy. That's his teammate. <gasps> maybe, maybe he didn't find his guy. No, he has to know. Like this, those are three gold spots. I'm not sure if he saw the farm, but he saw the wood line as well. That has to be fine, right? That's just so weird. Okay, building a barracks in no man's land. 
Remember guys, this is the finals. Those are the four best players in the Age of Empires 2 world in the year 2002. At least when it comes to Nations Cup wise. So clearly one of the best in the world. Maybe not top four directly. But Cam Cam, Ken, Shun Yu. Surely, surely. Honestly. Okay, forward stable now from Coconut. At the other side we have forward stable from Chun Yu as well. So, um, yeah. Interesting. And archer range from Ken. Oh, militia defense and archer range here. So, Taiwan is going for double archer range. And we see Hong Kong going for double stable. And now with aggressive towers, let's take a look how this engagement is going. So some villagers around, scouts around here as well. Swimmer now coming to the front, villagers have been pulled, trying to fight this down. Nice micro there, back by Sun Yu. Let's take a look what he can do, villagers. Well, one should go down here. It seems like that spearman should really go ham though. And looks like one villager trades off against one... Militia and this tower doesn't look like it was cancelled. Let's take a look. 75 stone only. He lost that tower. Ay, ay, ay. What a blunder. And nice fighting down skills here from KM. KM went for some spearmen, some militia to defend that skirmishes. And that is just a heavy, heavy loss here. Tricky stuff. Okay, what's going on on the other side? Double archery range. We see some aggression here. Lost one villager. Need to go away from his berry scouts around. But now the aggression is coming towards the front. You see beautiful back farm placement from all the players. Fearing some aggression. And at least green and blue here. And going to lose two villages as well. Oh, now squeezing through the TC. You see some walls here. But no real quick walling was possible. One villager going back into the TC and that is annoying AF. Trying to harass some over here. Interesting moves. Okay, now the aggression continues here. Scouts going towards the town center, losing one. Another archer range sneaked around, going for two sneaky archer ranges. Skirm still chasing down those villagers and Coconut in some troubles. Will lose one scout here at the front. Walled that tower quite beautifully. Those villagers still chasing down Ken. Going for more farms. Villagers now trying to fight this up. If they can get that single spearman. Maybe the scouts can clean this up. Some other villagers over here. And this is a pretty intense one. Obviously Ken cannot um, go for another tower. Neither can Coconut. Maybe he's the first one because he's on stone. Chun Yu is going on stone as well. And now goes aggressively. Goes for one archer. And oh, now we see KM Cam walling in those stables. Or, oh, well, the one stable. And now goes for the aggression as well. But the sneak around attack is coming over. And that's not a lot of wood income at the moment from KM Cam. Some idle villagers here as well. Aggression continues. Coconut now with the defensive tower. And that looks like he will get it up. Scares the army away and is going for some aggression over here. That's annoying for Mr. Ken as well. Pretty intense game here. It's really tough to follow all the action. Oh, and now that archer. I kind of wanted to question it earlier. But obviously that's now so much better than a skirmisher here. And really getting the damage done against those villagers. But not really getting a single kill. Oh, town bell even. Oh, and now the villagers are going back to the front. Mike swing those back, but now the aggression here. Oh, and we see it on you with the tower probably in time. It looks pretty good. We will take an update there at the same time. Skirms running around. And over here, well, some losses. And as you see, seems like all the scouts after all died. I'm Ken. A bit in the favorable position here compared to Coconut, who really has a very, very bad wood line. Not much we can say about that. Skirms being fought down by all those villagers. Lovely play for sure. Now going for the stone at the front. Oh, and even two scouts trapped here. Continue you not with the reaction in time here. Interesting stuff. And it looks like Taiwan is somewhat in the better position at the moment. Now goes for one palisade here. Maybe wants to get a sneaky tower up. We'll see about that. Still trying to run around. Yancy. Continuing with this aggression. We'll block off that last 89... Food from the berries will block, I believe, two, maybe even three farms. That one should not be reseeded, and he is not. 
And, well, sneaky tower for sure. Already walling it quite heavily. 2 HP on that one only. And... Ay, yeah, yeah. That's a so much army from Ken here. That's incredible stuff. Let's switch a bit to players. Very limited resources here for new. We have Coconut with 34 pop only. And that has to be so much better for Ken, who is at solid 49. So not too many villagers either. He has 14 military. So at 36 villagers here at the 19 minute mark. Defensive archer range, maybe some skirmishes to defend. Could really help out here. Lots of idols. Tough to micro all of them. And just the clear army advantage. But Coconut, well, he is harassing the top line again. That is a pretty sneaky tower. And five farms have to be deleted. Oh, and so new. Well, he is coming around. A lot of spearmen here, but they won't help against archers, skirmishes. At the same time, getting some harassment done at the front. Defensive stable and another defensive tower. Let's take a look what they can do here. Trying to build another lumber camp. Rules here have plus two. Huh? Ay, ay, ay. Going for more raids here. Oh, left that tower open. Don't like that too much. And yeah, I'm not going for the raid here. Blacksmith now and the stable. Let's take a look. If the archers went to the other side, they couldn't do much either, I would say. Somewhat safe there with the double towers. And oh, look at that. Aggressive tower here from KM. KM trying to block that gold. He did scout all those gold spots earlier, as we saw. Let's take a look at that again, guys, shall we? And he sees all the gold spots, the big one and the two smaller ones, all now in control of him. And oh, that's a sneaky tower in Cam Cam. He has no idea about that. And now the double is real. And we see Blue not really prepared for that. And I don't really think that the attack here will do too much. Interesting. Oh. Trying to get some raids here. Still no upgrades. But that should be just too good. Being back in that wood line, where are all the scouts? Five around here and poor. Tricky stuff. I, I still feel so new. Should be super safe. Very closed area and the double tower protecting themselves. Should be a good spot. And now getting the raid in the back. Where is Green's army? He's sending some villagers to the front. Maybe wants to get gold over there. Main gold spot is blocked off. Another gold spot blocked off here at the front. Another defensive tower. Oh, and maybe not enough spearmen. I can count two spearmen having reasonable HP so that maybe he could still fight this off. Let's take a look. For now, he decides to run. Maybe wants to get rid of the villagers first and tries to outrun them. But loses two skirms and an archer in the meanwhile. Will get a kill against that villager most likely. Maybe even against that scout. Not really. And, well, he needs to go back even further. Villagers are focusing down the spearmen. More aggression over here, getting some villager kills. Tricky spot, blocking all those farms. Ah, yeah, yeah, this is looking better and better here for Taiwan, if you ask me. Spearmen need to take an engagement. Where's the rest of them? A beautiful tower here. And, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so need to run over here. So new. Doing a great job against KM. KM, one of the best players in the world at that moment, so... You see how well Jansi was playing at that time as well. An absolute beast. And Spearman. He is going house against all those scouts. But now losing his life. Still, nice harassment for sure. Another aggressive tower. Another defensive tower as well. Let's take a look to new. He is going for some more stable. Still no gold control for him. Has a lot of wood banked up. A lot of farmers blocked as well. His aggressive villagers. I can't really find them. Oh. Still oh, the ones that ran around here. Aggressive stable <laughs> in the face <laughs> of Tonyu. Big problem though still is Mr. Coconut. Let's take a look at his resources. 32 food only now went on to gold. And this will be tricky. Now using his aggressive stable again. 
and she has some farmers working for himself. It feels like KM Cam could maybe think about the transition. Well, 300 food. And where is he on gold? Ah, here at the front. Adding another stable. So that will be double stable, double archery range feudal age aggression here. But now the raid will go back into the wood line and into the farms first. Losing one scout here is Coconut. Oh god, and now the double against him and he still does not have a good wood line. Now going for that one in the south. Did get one kill here. Maybe he cannot micro this. Towers still around. See, Tanyu trying to defend. Now goes for the market. Goes for some more walls. Tries to be safe. Some more villager losses here. We see finally some people with some upgrades on their units. At least Mr. Ken. And those scouts, well, they lost their life here at the same time. I heard one villager going down, but that was it. Won't get a second one. And that was ah, maybe the thing that could pull him back into this series. If he maybe got something done there with his scouts. But didn't really happen. Oh, some spearman raids there in the TC. Coconut. Just seems like he cannot really keep up with the great max skills of our Taiwanese players here. Such a tough, tough spot for sure. Got around here. Oh, lots more farms from KM. KM has a lot of towers there to defend that area as well. Absolutely lovely play. Those archers. I will find another kill for sure. Maybe even two. Oh, scouts trying to run around here. Maybe you can find the archers at that. Or oh, the villagers at that side. That villager is not safe. Or what? <gasps> Did he just click that through? That was actually a great play. But in the end, the villager will be safe. Some more archers. Defensive tower trying to maybe kill that tower in exchange. And those two archers won't really do too, too much. Okay, now we have Ken on the way to Castle Age. Let's take a look at the resource of the other players. Oh, oh, but first we will see that raid and that's still some HP on the scouts left. We'll snack at least one villager. Uh, looks like he can even snack a second one, but then needs to run away. Or oh, does he? One HP there. Maybe he focuses down the, another one and we'll get three uh oh coconut not really taking care that will be three dead villagers here and i believe then the spearman should clear this up so i'm cam cam roughly 50 percent up his teammates oh no cam cam only at 100 food now only trying to go for gold didn't go for gold at all and that's why he does have zero upgrades wouldn't even know how to get on the blacksmith maybe Goes for that gold in the very center. It's on you. Oh, he will click up any second. But has zero gold control as well. So what is he going for? Light calf? I have no idea. That's so weird. He only bought himself up to castle late using the market. So forging now. A knight. No upgrade here. Both saw. Hand card. Table number two defensively won't really go up. That's a lot of army from KM KM. And let's take a look at the last resources coconut here. Well, he just clicked to Castle H as well. So maybe there's a small chance that he can hold this off. Will survive with two villagers on gold. Has a lot of defensive towers mining camp not too well placed now goes for another barracks love that because he obviously fears a lot of knights coming over kind of tc from i am ken and oh it's on you okay that's how he's trying to get back on his gold some knights around and we'll just kill that tower with the aggressive tc lovely play for sure overall score still somewhat doable and oh, with all those towers, maybe he can defend off against the knights. Let's see, Barracks needs to finish. And Tio Desperate needs to get out some 
spearmen. I will have one that won't really win the fight. Even two that are just going down there quite instantly. Kind of tough. Pwah. And that's a lot of knights. How many have two stables only working? Uh oh. No upgrades on those towers. Let's take a look. Will the tower here finish? I believe it will. Trying to right click it. Villagers should jump into it. Oh, ah, saved quite a bit. Only lost one here. But still, the barracks absolutely unused. That tower is going down. So staying active here. Score looks somewhat good for Taiwan. Remember, in only 700 years, the game will be over. Regardless of the situation. And the team that has the higher, higher score will win this one. Is this AOC or AOK? Well, the hunts were introduced in AOC. So, hmm, very big indicator that it is AOC. Even adding some more archers. Okay. Now pikemen upgrade. Queuing up some more of those. I like defensive towers. Keeps him in the game. Hoping that Sun Yu can make something happen. Plus one, plus one for him. And bloodlines. But now Ken is going for the raid in the gold. Instant reaction here by Mr. Jancy. So love that. Let's going for some more ratings. Let's take a look. Oh, 40 Cs even here from Jancy. And he was so good at that time. I still remember a lot of other games where he just got pushed and boomed back. Went up to 8 to 10 TCs. Something like that. And... He is just so famous for that. Building very little army, trying to defend, not lose too many villagers. Very instant reaction timings for that time. And that's what he's trying to do here. So there's some army, helps out his teammate for now. Who's aggression? Well, kind of stopped here. Okay, let's scroll through populations. Coconut at 60, his teammate at 66. Can at a solid 93 even. And KMKM KM at 87 will reach Castle Age in one and a half minutes as well. A okay what without Hans? Indeed. Hans, Koreans, Aztecs, Mayans, and Spanish were the five AOC civs. Upgrading from 13 civilizations to 18. All of them kind of imbalanced at that time. Koreans. Probably the weakest on the most standard maps, but incredibly good on Black Forest. Remember, we also had Harbadiers introduced at that point. And so everyone felt like those Siege Onages with new, incredibly strong Harbadiers have to be still sick. It's civilization that don't need to build houses. People went crazy. And people didn't really know why Spanish could be good. Power of Conquistador wasn't really figured out. Remember, guys, if you cannot micro, it is really tough to play. Oh, some more raids, but oh, that's a lot of pikemen as well. So, Tonyu needs to retreat. We now have KM, KM in Castle Age here as well. And what is he going for? Spearman, some defensive skirmishers, town center, and build some knights. Pikeman upgrade as well. More TCs coming his way. And well, Ken just goes for the boom here as well. So overall, pretty lovely play from all the players. Trying to survive, trying to boost up their ego. Some raids here. We see plus two attack before plus two defense. The argument for that was that people felt, yeah, well, it's benefiting my knights and my pikemen at the same time. So it has to be the better upgrade. But, well, nowadays we know that melee units need the defense upgrades before the attack upgrades. Someone should spawn the Time Travel Legacy AV2 tournament. We can only use CRT monitors, max 1024 resolution, old mouse keyboards, dial up connection like back in 2002, and Leary isn't allowed to play because he didn't exist. Well, he did exist in 2002, right? I think he was born like January 2002, something like that. 
So yeah, Dowd and I played against each other before Lyra was born. Ah, oh, well, I'm saying that story over and over again. But well, it is AoE2 history, so only makes sense to me. Now, double archer range here from Chun Yu. What is he trying to go for? So there's two archer ranges at home, adds two more. He's going for TC number five as well. He's producing out of two of them. Remember, single Q was the absolute standard there as well. Now, that's a lot of knights and that's an interesting castle here blocking that gold spot quite nicely and now the spearmen well they won't be able to do a lot for quite some time knights can just come in raid over and over again and those spearmen just melt under castle fire oh god now sending some archers around some pikemen under the castle and that's what i just said that's something that absolutely should not happen coconut wasting a lot of his army here tricky situation for him and boah, needs to retreat here for sure so many villagers adding some extra arrows as well and ay, 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 those are just heavy heavy losses some knights coming around and well at the same time we have a push over here the both taiwanese feeling like they have big enough of an advantage to make something happen now we even see cas from Chenyu. uh Doragaka. Uh, watch the VOD, my friend. We did show what mice they used. It was all ball mice in 2002. I'm going for his main gold, his can. Some raid not coming in in time, and that will just be ugly. Maybe the main TC even going down. Doesn't even need to fight it, if you ask me. Thing is that the castle is doing the damage anyways, and well, now getting some raids in for sure. At the same time, well, those farms have to be deleted. CAs, let's take a look what they can do. And oh, we see the GG timing here. 44 minute game, and ay ay ay, the double push did end it in the end. And can and I am KN KM are taking the. World Summer Games 2002 Nations Cup Trophy. Coconut, well, his macro wasn't really on point. Didn't really do the damage there with his scouts in the wood line, then took a lot of damage. Yeah, he had a very bad wood line. We can all agree on that. Maybe if he scouted that one a bit earlier and could have gone for that, maybe one defensive tower could have helped out. Poof. Tough spot. Shun you. Played pretty evenly there with KMKM, KM, I would say, which is just incredible to say. And absolute beast in this game. It felt like Coconut, as I said before, I never heard of him before or after this tournament. Maybe just carried a bit by Jancy, who is an absolute beast. And in the end, couldn't really win the game for his team, but he carried him to the second place, which is incredible. By itself. You have to remember how competitive this game was at that time as well. And so many people played this before. We can see the Arbalest Cup later on, like in the next episode. There was a 1v1 tournament in the first 24 hours. 250 people signed up. In the end, they had to cap it at 512 as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Won't really happen nowadays. With this simple, what was it, like 5 or 10k tournaments. And we see the timings. Pretty solid here. That was pop 22, pop 22. And I believe pop 24 and pop 25. So you can see how solid those um, fuel ages were. And castle age timings. Quite a bit delayed. And coconut never really got under the big army cam cam got pushed down quite a bit as well but in the end had the military count going for him on the other side and lovely to see those people play again and ah, that was it from av2 history world cyber games nations cup 2002 i hope you tune in next time we will have Arbolet cups coming your way